This is the first in a set of videos on root loci. Now just a quick overview of where we will be going. We're going to look at things like what are root loci and why are they important? And how do I compute them? And that will be the first few videos. Later on we might look at how do dynamic compensators affect root loci and from that ultimately how do I undertake compensator design? Now what context have we got? We're going to assume that we've got a simple feedback loop here you'll see with a compensator M and a system G. Now what we're going to do is we're going to expand this compensator so we can write it as some scalar constant K times a corresponding transfer function M tilde of S. So in essence separate the scalar from the dynamic. Now, we can also calculate the closed loop transfer function. You'll see it's given down here as GC equals GKM tilde over 1 plus GKM tilde. And what we're particularly interested in is where are the closed loop poles and how do these depend on the choice of K. Some definitions then. We're using the words root loci. So the first thing to do is to understand what do we mean by the word root and what do we mean by the word loci. So Usually when we talk about roots, we're looking at polynomials. In this particular case, we're looking at the roots of the denominator of the closed loop transfer function. In other words, the closed loop poles. So when we say root, we actually mean closed loop pole. You may have come across the word locus. It essentially means a path or a root. And loci is the plural of locus. So we're looking at paths. So if I put these two definitions together, root loci are the paths followed by the closed loop poles as k changes. And they're important because the poles tell us about the stability and behaviour of a loop. Let's look at an example then. Calculate the closed loop poles for g of s and use a plot to show how these change as k changes from 0 to infinity. Okay, so I've done the closed loop transfer function here so you can see, and essentially it's going to come out like this, k over k plus s plus 2, so you can see the closed loop pole polynomial is pc equals s plus k plus 2. So what I can do now is I can substitute in some different values of k. If I put k equals naught, then I'm going to get a pole at minus 2. If I put k equals 1, I'm going to get a pole at minus 3 k equals 2, I get a pole at minus 4, k equals 3, I get a pole at minus 5, and so on. Now the next thing I might want to do is do a sketch and say, okay, what does this look like? Where are these poles actually appearing? So you'll notice I had a pole at minus 2, and that corresponded to k equals 0. I had a pole at minus 3, and that corresponded to k equals 1. had a pole at minus 4 and that corresponded to k equals 2. And now hopefully you can see what's happening. As I increase k then the pole moves to the left. So we have this concept of a locus. The locus of the pole is it starts at minus 2 and it moves left as k increases. Next example then. Here you'll see we've got a quadratic system. G equals 1 over s squared plus 4s. And we'll let the compensator again just be k. So for this one, if I calculate the closed loop pole polynomial, there it is. It's s squared plus 4s plus k. So what I'm going to do is ask, where are the closed loop poles for these different values of k? 0, 1, 4, 10, and 50 done the first two for you. You can see if k equals naught, then pc becomes s squared plus 4s, and therefore I get s plus 4, s plus 0. So you've got poles at minus 4 um, and 0. If I set k equals 1, you'll see I get s squared plus 4s plus 1, and in this case I'm going to get s plus 3.73, s plus 0.27. What about the next one? s squared plus 4s plus 4. Well, in this particular case, I think it's going to delete it for me. You'll see you've got s plus 2 squared. I'd better write it up here. You'll see you've got s plus 2 squared. There's something gone funny with that window. So you've got two poles at minus 2. 
What about this next one down here? s squared plus 4s plus 10. So if I write that one, I'll do it at the top of the screen. You'll see you've got s plus 2 squared plus 6. So what you've got now is clearly you've got some complex roots. You've got a real bit at minus 2 and an imaginary bit root 6. And what about this last one? s squared plus 4s plus 50. Well again, you'll have s plus 2 squared and now you have plus 44. So let's go to the next page and see what this tells us. So you'll notice I've put down in the box um, the factorizations of this closed loop pole polynomial for all those different k's and you'll see there they are. Okay, and what I'm going to do is plot these and see if there's some form of pattern. So for k equals naught, I had a pole at naught and a pole at minus 4. So there's minus 4 and there's naught, and that corresponded to k equals naught. If I use a different color for the next one, at k equals 1, I had minus 0.27 and minus 3.73. So blue corresponds to k equals 1. Next, I use black. If k equals 4, they were both at minus 2. So that corresponds to k equals 4. If I then took k up to 10, you'll see I got 2 plus or minus 2.45j. So I got a pole there and a pole there. So that corresponds to k equals 10. And finally, if k equals 50, I can't really fit. It's going to go way up here. OK? k equals 50. You can see the imaginary bit gets much, much bigger, but the real bit doesn't change. So if I now say, well, what's the loci here? How have these poles changed as I increase k? You can see what's happened is this pole has gone this way. This pole has come this way. They've joined together when k equals 4, and then 1 has gone that way, and 1 has gone that way. So you can see the loci of the closed loop poles as k goes from 0 to infinity. Final example then. Here we've got g equals k s plus 1 over s plus 2 s plus 3. So I can write down by inspection that the closed loop pole polynomial is going to be k into s plus 1 plus s plus 2 s plus 3. <coughs> and now let's put in different values of k. So if I put k equals 0, what do I get? I get s squared plus 5s plus 6, which gives me poles at minus 2 and minus 3. If I put in k equals 1, I get s squared plus 6s plus 7, and that will give me poles at minus 4.4 and minus 1.6, approximately. I'm not doing fine decimal places. At k equals 2, you'll see I get s squared plus 7s plus 8, and that gives me poles at minus 5.6 and minus 1.44. And if I do something like k equals 5, I get s squared plus 10s plus 11, and that gives me poles at minus 8.75 and minus 1.25. So again, let's sketch this and see if there's some obvious loci. So you'll notice again, I've marked the pole positions so we don't lose them here. And now what I want to do is put them on my plot. So if a cake was naught, what did I have? I had minus 2 and minus 3. So there you go, minus 2 and minus 3, and that corresponds to k equals naught. Next, if I went to k equals 1, I've got minus 1.6 and minus 4.4. So I went there and there. So that corresponds to k equals 1. If I went to k equals 2, this one moved a bit further left, and this one moved quite a bit further right. So that corresponds to k equals 2. And when k equals 5, I'll go back to red. You'll see this is moving further that way, and this is moving further that way. So you'll see I've got a loci where as I increase k, one pole is going that way, and one pole is going that way. So we're very clear directions for the movement of the closed loop poles, and those are called the root loci. Now I could do some other examples with high order systems, but it's not really paper and pen exercises because you end up with cubics and quartics and you can't solve the roots by inspection. So we'll look at that in the next video. Some conclusions then. We've demonstrated that as the compensator scalar gain changes, 
the closed loop pulse change. And the root loci are defined as the loci followed by the closed loop poles as k goes from 0 to infinity. And you'll see they tend to follow quite clear paths. Now, it's normal to group all the compensator and system dynamics into a single transfer function, a bit like this here, g times n tilde, and separate out a single scalar gain when you are doing root loci.